ABC senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel tonight leading us off from Kyiv again this evening. Tonight, the full brutality of Russia's war on Ukraine. This verified video circulating online shows the relentless bombardment of Kharkiv. It was one of more than 60 strikes on a city that's refused to surrender since the start of this war. Being caught in the open in Kharkiv can cost you your life. And the capital, Kyiv, also coming under increased shelling today. The city awoke to the sound of explosions this morning. Plumes of smoke rising after another airstrike. Captured in this video, posted to social media and verified by ABC News. At least four people were killed in the pre-dawn attack. Another apartment block ablaze, 15 stories high, and a frantic effort to reach anyone trapped inside. We can see the extent of the damage. Yet another strike into the heart of Kyiv. It's not clear whether this was a missile or a rocket. But once again, residential areas, civilian infrastructure is being targeted. Incredibly, the number of casualties still seems to be small. But in response, it appears that the mayor of the city is now imposing a city-wide curfew. On days like this, the only safe place feels deep underground, where thousands seek shelter in subways. Many of Kyiv's metro stations are built hundreds and hundreds of feet underground. And that's because they were designed with nuclear war in mind. And that's also why thousands of the city's residents have chosen to move underground for their own safety away from the Russian bombardment. And how do you manage living underground? No, как? It's strange, the man tells me. We have no idea what's coming next. The worst part is uncertainty. Only God knows what will happen next. And in the midst of the war, a bold display of solidarity from European leaders who braved the bombardment to come to Kyiv to show Europe's unequivocal support for Ukraine. Today, a fourth round of talks between Russia and Ukraine entered a second day. Despite optimistic comments that a ceasefire could be struck, negotiators only agreeing to meet again. And a senior U.S. official telling ABC there seems little hope for diplomacy at this point in time. In Mariupol, amid apocalyptic scenes, officials say 20,000 civilians in some 4,000 cars were able to flee through a humanitarian corridor in the largest evacuation from the city so far. But an aid convoy carrying desperately needed food, water and medicine couldn't get to residents who've been without power or heat for well over a week now. Putin's invasion has now created more than 3 million refugees in just 20 days. Nearly two-thirds have fled to neighbouring Poland. Viktor Okendo is at the Warsaw Expo, now a makeshift city of cots and clinics, even a makeshift bus station, where refugees can board for free transport throughout Europe. We're inside the largest refugee hub in all of Europe. They're currently housing about 8,000 people here, mostly women and children. This is the play area. 1.5 million children have been displaced. That means that since the beginning of the war, a child has become a refugee nearly every second. The wars claim the lives of hundreds, perhaps thousands of Ukrainians. Tonight, we're learning it's taken the lives of two more people. Veteran Fox News cameraman Pierre Zakshevsky and 24-year-old producer Oleksandra Kushinova, who were killed while reporting near Kyiv yesterday. Despite the risks, Fox says Kuchinova was tirelessly helping crews navigate the city, gathering information and speaking to Ukrainian sources. Fox News reports the two were working with correspondent Benjamin Hall when incoming fire hit their vehicle. Hall was wounded, but the extent of his injuries hasn't been disclosed. And as the toll of this war grows daily, Ukrainian President Zelensky continuing to rally the world to his side. Addressing Canada's parliament today, calling again for a no-fly zone and repeatedly asking lawmakers to imagine if what was happening in Ukraine was happening there. His speech done, he was met with a three-minute standing ovation. Lawmakers shouting Ukraine's slogan of defiance, Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine. It was an extraordinary scene. Ian Panel joins us again tonight from the Ukrainian capital. Ian, a powerful address by Zelensky asking uh, once again for this no-fly zone. He got that standing ovation. You mentioned three minutes long, but obviously not the no-fly zone. And I, I gather a very good chance he'll ask for that again tomorrow when he addresses the U.S. Congress via video link. 
Yeah, I think almost certainly. I mean, Zelensky's been firm that a no-fly zone would act as a deterrent to Putin. That's what he believes. He also believes that preemptive sanctions might have averted the, inversion, uh, the invasion in the first place. And if you're going to hear the sound of the bombardment in the background, that's why he wants it. But President Biden has been clear that such a move would run a risk of a direct conflict with Russia, and he's not going to involve U.S. forces in this war. David. Ian Pennell leading us off from Kiev again tonight. Ian, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.